Oh, hello everybody. Yes, the snow is still here. And I thought this would be a good chance to try to get some uh, just fresh snow shots. Because I'm assuming uh, not many people have walked through the park and so forth yet. So it's kind of nice to get those uh, new shots. The funny thing I was thinking was it's actually kind of bright right now. It's not, it's not bright because of the, uh, the sun, because obviously you can't see the sun out, but just because of the snow. And it kind of made me think again of the um, like the filters, what kind of filters you should use. I don't know, yesterday I was using the uh, 8PL and I thought it was too dark, so... I don't know, maybe I'll try the 4PL today or maybe again I'll just, you know, mess around with the ISOs in the 8PL, but we'll see. Yeah, and obviously it's not actually snowing from the sky right now, so that should make it easier for the uh, drone to fly around and get some good shots. Uh, let's see, what's new? Of course, tomorrow is the Super Bowl, and basically that's a big deal. Lots of advertising dollars and so forth. Although I read this uh, interesting news about drones related to the Super Bowl. Apparently they made a restriction, like a flying restriction, in terms of how far a drone can fly within the uh, Super Bowl area. And apparently it's really ridiculous, like over 40 miles or something like that. So I had to try to put that in perspective, because uh, we use kilometers here, so I converted that. And apparently that's over 50 kilometers. So I had to put that in perspective, so, I mean, just an example, like from Vancouver to anywhere that's, you know, almost even 50 kilometers, that's way far out. So basically they're banning that whole section, like to fly a drone, even if it's not even remotely close to like wherever they're playing, like the football game. Who is that protecting? <laughs> Is there a drone that can actually fly for that long with the battery life? Like from that distance to the stadium? Wow, that's not so ridiculous, I thought. I guess those are the examples though of um, people keep talking about, you know, bad drone pilots and so forth. <laughs> for this, I would say our mind-boggling lawmakers and all that. Recently read this other story too. It looked like it was kind of old, back like in uh, 2016. But it was about a um, store or something like that that got robbed and they didn't actually catch the, the thieves. But then a gentleman or something had a drone, like he was flying it and he usually flies it for fun and basically the drone followed them I guess to like a bench and those guys are just sitting there drinking and so forth so while the guy was looking at his live feed I guess he shared it with his um, the cops and so forth and then they actually just busted them. <laughs> and apparently they were so shocked like, what you guys had a drone? Oh, it kind of makes me think because what if something like that happened in like um, an area here where normally they forbid you from flying a drone. Let's just say you saw a Robbie and I had my Mavic Pro. I could technically go catch the guy like with the drone like just to monitor it, not actually chase him on foot. But then the bylaws or whatever would say like, nope, you're not allowed to fly it. So what would you do in that case? Would you actually use your drone to like help people in that way? Or would you just say, oh, I don't want to get in trouble with the law? I think that's an example of how, you know, again, you need to have balance with the rules and regulations. Well, I was thinking how silly it can turn out to be like a movie in that case. Like, even though those guys were in the wrong for uh, stealing stuff and the drone actually has the evidence, they're going to turn it around and say, they're the victim. That drone invaded their privacy. They gave them no permission to take them and so forth. Ugh. You guys just wait. Something like that's going to happen, I bet. What is such a different view with the snow and so forth? I almost want to take my Mavic Pro and fly it through here. Actually, I still haven't found any kind of um, like a backpack mount for this uh, camera. I think that would be good if I had one. Then I can just walk around and, you know, capture some footages and stuff without having to worry about clicking this on and so forth all the time. Actually, one of the things I kind of had a, a bad habit with, if you would call it that so far, with the uh, shooting and so forth, is I've often left the uh, white balance on auto. I think that's the only thing I've left on uh, auto for the most part. And that's because the first time I tried the uh, Mavic, I set it to manual and I forgot to change it and everything looked blue. And then ever since then, I was like, oh, just do it automatically. But I think I need to try to start doing it everything manually because I am for all the other settings. So why not for this? Uh-oh, looks like the snow is picking up now. I actually didn't come as uh, prepared today too. Oh, I guess I'll make this a, uh, well, a semi-quick flight. I think it should be okay based on my uh, test today, but we'll see.
Oh, oh man, I think that shot went uh, okay from what I saw. I was just kind of getting a little nervous with the, uh, the snow again. But kind of like yesterday um, when the uh, drone landed, again, it was surprisingly uh, all dry. It's only when I land it and you keep it in a still spot where it seems to get, you know, obviously wet because it's staying still. Ah, so that's kind of cool. Although it still makes me a little worried about flying in the snow. Is it recommended? I don't know. But uh, hopefully I'll get home and uh, edit it and you guys can all see how it was. Ironically, it's actually snowing harder than it was yesterday when I was uh, actually doing the film. So <laughs> I actually didn't come as prepared. I didn't bring an umbrella or anything. So I probably got snow all over me and stuff as you guys can see. Alright, time to make the trek back home. I'll see you guys later.